So let's talk about something that's called NURBS. You want to pay attention as we, as we follow along with this because it's a little bit more complex in terms of some of the modeling. Um, uh, NURBS are ways of creating formulas for objects by using a flat series of points or drawings. And what we do for that is first we create what's called a spline and then we apply a NURBS to that to create a, a three-dimensional object. Okay, so the, the very first one that I'm going to show is what's called a, um, a lathe NURBS. So can anybody guess by just looking at this button what type of object you could make with a lathe NURBS? Right, a cylindrical vase or a bottle or some sort of form in that way. Okay, so let's just check that out. When you drop this in, it's not going to give you anything at all. Okay, because we, we need to work with a line drawing to begin with. So the first thing is, what I want to do is go to the, um, to the multiple viewports, okay? And along the uh, Y and the X, I'm just going to start drawing uh, the spline. So if I go to the spline button right here, if you just click on freehand, then uh, you can start to draw with this. So for example, if I click over in the, um, the Y and the X, you can literally just start drawing a shape. Okay, so I'm just going to show, you know, show a quick example of that. And when I let go, notice that a bunch of points have been plotted along that shape. Now for this, what I want to do, I'm going to uh, delete that quickly. I'm just going to create a basic shape that starts close to the y-axis and then ends again close to the y-axis. All right, so I'm just going to create a basic shape here. Sorry, click on my spline tool again. All right basic form okay and then what I'm gonna do is take this spline and I'm gonna apply it to the lathe nerves right take this form drop it right in here and notice what happens immediately if I zoom out of the perspective view we get this form that's like a vase right the shape the form of it has that circular pattern so what it does is it takes that uh, that dimension, and the reason why I drew it along the, the Y and the X is because it takes that form and it spins it around the Y, okay? So if you go and click on the Move tool, for example, all right, and you select any of these points, you can change your shape and your form, all right? So, you know, moving one of the forms, changing it around, you can really manipulate the form and the shape of it, you know, pretty quickly along its form. Another thing is, notice what happens when I click on one of those dots. I get this series of bars. Has anybody seen those bars before? Does anyone know what they're called? How about an illustrator? You ever see those? No? Okay. That's all right. Uh, they're called Bezier curves. And what it, if you grab on one of the little black handles, you could pull it out and you can change the curvature as well, okay? So from one of those points, you can change the curve and follow it along the, the, that form. So you can manipulate based on uh, any of those points, just sort of click and change, and you can grab the curve and move it according to that, that pattern as well, okay? So the question that Sharif had was, what happens if after we have the form, what if I want to continue to manipulate it section by section? So right now, uh, if I click on the spline, I can move any of those points around. If I click on the lathe nerves, then I can start to change the, um, those subdivisions. So you can change the subdivisions, first of all. Right now it's at 24. I can make it 50 if I wanted to, and it would give us more polygons, okay? Uh, you could change um, the angle, uh, the isoprem subdivision. So some of these different elements have to do with how many polygons it's going to be assigned. The other thing is uh, we can change the caps. So right now, uh, since I've, I've started at the X and started at the Y, we don't really have any caps quite yet. If I go back to the spline here and I click on this first point that I started, I drag it out. Now it gives me a flat edge at the top. This is a cap, okay? Whenever you have a start and an end, you have that sort of cap. So I can go to my lathe nerves, and I can change the caps. So for example, I can add a fillet cap to it, and it'll be slightly beveled in that form. 
So those are different elements that you can work with as well. You can also have no caps. So that's another, another element as well. Now, uh, let's say I, I have my object solidified just the way that I want it. I'm going to make this a little bit more, a little less. I'm just going to make it subdivision of 12 so there's larger polygons. What I can do with this, the same way that we use the primitive objects, remember before we can manipulate the primitive objects for their points and their polygons, is I can uh, make this editable, right? So if I click on the lathe nerves and I go over here and make it editable, now suddenly this becomes a solid polygon and I can change it based on its points, its edges, or its polygons, okay? So now I could grab an individual polygon and shift and move that. Okay, so if I wanted to make a handle on the side of the vase, for example, I could start pulling out some polygons and shaping it according to that direction as well. But before you can move uh, and manipulate any of those polygons, you can, you have to make it editable first. Okay? All right, I'll start over. Okay, so what we're going to do next is what's called a sweeps nerve. And does it, can anyone guess what kind of object the sweeps nerve would make? Tubes, right? Uh, anything that, that has that sort of tubular sort of fashion you can make with the sweeps nerve. All right, so I'm going to drop that in. Uh, and uh, the first thing I want to do is, um, is draw two different forms for this to follow. So what a sweeps nerve does is it takes two splines. One, you know, the spline is that line that we've drawn. One is the, the line that we draw, okay? That's the path that it's going to follow, okay? And the second one is uh, a shape, okay? So, for example, we want to make a round tube. We need a, a path for that tube to follow. And then we need a shape to go along that path to make that structure, okay? So uh, what we'll do first is uh, at, on the top view, the Z and the X, I want you to just grab a freehand tool and just draw a simple squiggly shape. That'll be good enough. Okay, and then what we need, so that's our path. The next thing that we need is the shape for it to follow. And instead of a primitive object, we want this to be just a two-dimensional spline shape. So if we go into the spline uh, palette, and actually what I want to do is click on the perspective view, okay? Go, go into the, uh, the spline palette and just grab a circle, all right? And you could choose any of these closed shapes, you know, star, rectangle, flower, any of those sort of closed shapes, this will work. Now, now we have two different forms for this to follow. Now, there's a bit of a hierarchy here. You have to apply one. Uh, I don't know if I remember. Let's see. I think you had the spline, the, the line first, and then you had the circle. Let's see if that works. There we go. That's it. So you dr first you do is you drop the... Uh, I'll go back a few steps. Okay, so I have my path and I have my object. I take the path, which is called spline, and maybe I'll just rename this. So we know that. I'll call this the path. Okay, and then circle, I'm just going to call the shape. You always need a path and a shape. So the first one is I would take the path, I would drop that in the sweeps nerve. And the second is I'll take the shape and drop that in the sweeps nerve. And now I create this tubular form. Now the, that's a little bit big, so, but I can always change those elements. So I can take, click on my shape and the scale tool and I can bring that down to a smaller form, okay? So there's a nice looking tube. The other thing is, is on the path, I can always grab, with the move tool, I can always grab any of those points, all right? And I can move it. I can also use the Bezier curves to change the, the curvature. And so you can utilize this to really create really interesting shapes and forms. Now there's some other attributes in the, in the sweeps nerves. Um, that I wanted to talk a little bit about. And the, the one was um, the end scale, okay? So the end scale right now is 100%. If you change this, you can have a, a different sort of scale. So if I do 50, then uh, let's make it smaller, actually. Let's make it 25%. Now notice what happens with our shape. It's smaller at the end of the spline than it is, 25% smaller than it is at the beginning, okay? So if you need to create, you know, some sort of curving cone-like shape or something that starts small and gets big, you can, you can change that by the end scale of the object. Um, and you can also do, 
you know, growth on the other side of that. You know, you could make this, uh, you know, 100 or 200% if you wanted to and change it in that sort of direction. Uh, you can also have the rotation change, which in this case, using a circle, it doesn't really matter. But let's say you had a, a square and you wanted it to like twist around, you could have rotation on there. Uh, so there's much, a bunch of different elements that you can play with in terms of that sort of form. The cool thing with this too is you can animate it, okay? So you can have something kind of start and stop along that uh, form. Okay, so that's that's a few different NURBS that that, that I, uh, I thought were interesting to introduce. And of course, if you're thinking about objects, you know, let's say you wanted to model a pair of headphones and you needed a cord, all right? You could easily use a sweeps NURB to create that, you know, that cord. If you have uh, an object that has some sort of twisted column or form, you can easily change, the, change those shapes or forms. Let me just grab another shape to show you what I mean by that. Uh, if I, instead of using the circle, if I bring in, let's say, a star, okay? Oops. Remember, you've got to bring your star in in the perspective view. And I drop that in the sweeps nerves. And I scale that down a little bit, okay? Now, notice that it's more of that star pattern, okay? So there's lots of ways that you can utilize the spline form uh, of the object. Also, you know, with some of these objects, like the star, for example, you can change the number of points. So right now it's eight, but I could easily have this be five, okay? You can change the form of it that way, too, really quickly. And then remember that at any time, if you need to edit this, just, you know, make it editable and you can move those polygons around in different ways.